Hi, this is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations. I'm here today to tell you the 10 reasons why this diesel truck with the sliding camper is better than a van. Now van life is all the rage, it's super popular, and I get that, I understand there are a lot of nice things about a van, but there's a lot of drawbacks about van life that people don't really talk about, and I think this is a better option for many of those reasons. So, number 10, the thing is, there aren't a lot of four-wheel drive diesel sprinter vans on the market, new or used. So you're gonna spend about 60 grand on that, which is what this truck would cost new, but I bought this truck used for a fraction of that price, and there's a lot of diesel four-wheel drive trucks on the market. So just supply and demand, you'll spend less on a truck than you will on a van. So number nine, this truck has a Cummins engine, which are legendary. This truck made 370 horsepower and 800 foot-pounds of torque from the factory. The engine is basically stock. I added dual Odyssey batteries to it recently. Plenty of power, so no need to modify it or reduce the reliability, which is what I'm after. In comparison, the V6 used in a four-wheel drive diesel Sprinter makes 188 horsepower, and I wanna say around 350 foot-pounds of torque, 375, um, so less than half the horsepower and torque, but the curb weight is gonna be very similar. This truck with the camper weighs about 11,000 pounds. Payloads in vans are very good, so the payload is very similar, um, and a built-out van is gonna weigh about the same, but with half the power. Number eight is just ease of maintenance. Because I bought a used truck, it was out of warranty. I wasn't too concerned with this. The inline six architecture of the Cummins engine makes it really easy to work on. Compared to a Duramax, a new Power Stroke, and certainly a van where half of the engine is underneath the engine bay and the other half is like inside the cab, it's way easier to work on. So number seven, this truck came from the factory with four wheel drive. And like a diesel engine, you're saying, I can get a four wheel drive Sprinter van, and that's true. But probably half the Rams sold come with four wheel drive. It's very easy to find used, it's easy to find new. That's not necessarily the case with vans. There's a huge market for Econo lines to convert to four wheel drive. With trucks, you just, no one's converting a two-wheel drive truck to four-wheel drive. You just find a four-wheel drive truck. And there's advantages to that, um, not just in terms of cost, but also in terms of reliability, simplicity. I'm not in the shop working on it. I'm out here on the trail. So in addition to four-wheel drive, number six, this came with a solid front axle. A Sprinter comes with IFS. A Duramax comes with IFS. I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with IFS, but I think that this is a stronger, more reliable system. Everything on this is bigger than a four-wheel drive Sprinter van. And so that adds up to more reliability. It's stronger uh, and it needs to be serviced less. To me, that's a big factor. And I don't really think I've given up anything in terms of ride quality based on the vans that I've been in in the past. So we've highlighted the differences between a four-wheel drive diesel Sprinter and my 2014 Ram 3500 truck. But a Sprinter has advantages over a truck alone that really I had to add this North Star camper in order to make up the difference, and I concede that. So this camper is a North Star 650 SC, which stands for self-contained. And number five on our list is this came with a shower. So it has an inside shower and it has an outside shower, 15 gallon water tank, hot water heater. And one of the things that I find when I'm dry camping out in the desert and I'm far from home is that a shower is really what makes me wanna go home and clean up. So number four, this has a toilet in it. There aren't a lot of sliding campers for short bed trucks on the market that have a toilet and a bathroom in them, but this does. It uses a cassette toilet and you can dump it in a pit toilet, like an outhouse. You can dump it in your toilet at home. You can, an RV dump spot. They're pretty easy to uh, clean and maintain. I don't use it all the time, but it's nice to have it and not need it rather than need a bathroom and it's snowing outside or freezing cold. Storage space is somewhat limited in this camper, and there's a lot of little places to store things, but not a lot of big storage spaces. I added these bamboo little containers that I got at Target. They were pretty cheap, and I just put Velcro underneath them. Um, so I keep like my bug spray here, or things to clean the kitchen up. Another thing I added are these C-Teak Teak mounts. These are meant for a kitchen galley in a marine application, in a yacht or a boat. A lot of the RV products I found are 
on the cheap side in terms of build quality, things that were for a marine application tended to be better built. So this actually holds the paper towels, the plates are out of the way, and cups are up there. I also got the spice rack. Now I had to modify these, unfortunately. I didn't take into account that the two burner Dometic stove swings up, so there needed to be space for that. But one of the nice things about having a camper, I've done a ton of camping out of a tent, just self-sufficient carrying everything with you. And I will admit that it's nice to have running water so you can do dishes, have a little stove instead of a jet boil so I can put a pan on there and I can make some breakfast burritos. Things like that have made it nice to camp out of. And you would get that in a van as well, potentially, if you built out your van that way. But if you just have a bed in the back, it's not gonna compete with this. So one of the great things about vans, you don't even have to get out of the vehicle, you just get out of the driver's seat and you go back to your bed. But the beds and vans can be kind of small. This has an actual queen size bed over the crew cab and it's a north-south configuration. So what that does is it allows you and your partner to not have to crawl over each other to get out if you need to use that bathroom or get up in the middle of the night. So it does take a minute to put up and put down. So in order to put the top up, there's just a button here. There are electronic jacks around the camper and it raises up 18 inches. So you can leave your bedding on here and this has a pretty thick mattress on it, better than some other pop-up campers that I've used in the past. The other nice thing is you have all this storage space underneath. So I'll put my clothes in here, carry my chairs. I've got a table with me, a tablecloth, um, a bunch of atlases, I carry some horseshoes with me, things like that that just live in here, a hammock. Um, these live in the camper all the time. They don't really take up any space once they're in here. The only bad thing is if you wanna get your hammock out, you have to put the top up because you can't lift up the bed in order to access these without putting the top up. I bought this camper in Colorado and it came with traditional turnbuckles to hold it down, but those don't have any give to them. And going off road, the chassis and the body are gonna flex and the camper is gonna flex inside the bed. So I added these torque lift anchor guards. They have a spring inside and they'll still stay tight but allow the whole thing to move at, rather than tear when you're off-road. So our number two reason why this diesel truck with a sliding camper is better than a van is you can tow with it. So the towing capacity of a four-wheel drive diesel sprinter van is 5,000 pounds. That doesn't cut it. I can't even tow my lightest rock crawler on my trailer behind that. It'll exceed 5,000 pounds. The trailer alone weighs 2,000 pounds. This can tow 15,000 pounds. So that big Ford truck that I have, that I did the 37s versus 40s video in, that truck weighs 7,000 pounds. I hook it up behind this thing, it doesn't mind at all. It'll maintain speeds over passes. You have to watch the EGTs, admittedly. You still have to drive it, but you're never gonna be able to do that with a diesel van. So one advantage that a van has over a camper is step-in height. I mean, this is at my waist to get in here. So when Samco Fabrication built these racks, they tied them together with this aluminum step here so you can easily go from the trailer ball or a lot of times I'm towing so I'll go from the actual trailer to the step and then into the camper. I added these front runner packs because there's not much storage space in the camper and a lot of the storage space is very small so I use these to store dry food goods in. They sit on the floor lashed down when we're moving and when you get to your destination and pop the top up there's more counter space once the top goes up so they can move there or with the high top lids, they're still strong enough. You can even use it as a step if you want to. And the number one reason why this Ram truck with a sliding camper is better than a four wheel drive diesel sprinter van is tire size. Vans come with tiny tires. They come with like 31s. You spend thousands of dollars to lift a van to fit smaller tires than this came with from the factory. I'm currently one running 37 inch NATO Ridge Grapplers on this truck. This is the third set of Ridge Grapplers it's had on it. I don't wear them out, they just keep getting bigger. So I started with a 295 75 18 on the factory rims, a little bigger than stock. Then I went to a 35 on the 18 inch factory rims. And now I'm running 37s on these AEV wheels 
The offset on these wheels is perfect. They're made specifically to run 37s on these trucks. So being a 2014, this truck has radius arms in the front as opposed to the four-link suspension that was used on earlier Rams. Four-link suspension offers more articulation. These bind up. They also don't seem to have the issues with death wobble the earlier trucks did. Um, this truck also has bigger unit bearings, bigger ball joints than the earlier Rams did. Um, ball joints are one of the things I did when I added the 37s. I took the truck to my friends at Axle Line and they replaced the 342 gears that it came with from the factory with 410s and added Dynatrack rebuildable ball joints. Now I didn't add lockers to it because I figured that was not going to be the limiting factor in where I could go. These have a pretty good gear driven limited slip in the rear so we just retained that. And then I bring a bunch of recovery gear with me that's on the back of the camper. We'll get to that in a minute. The rear suspension on the Ram 2500s uses coil springs, but while they ride good, I don't love how coils react when you put a load on them. Um, the height changes quite a bit as opposed to leaf springs. So this truck has leaf springs from the factory. I find they actually get less wheel hop with the leaf springs based on my experience. I added airlift airbags to this, and they're in Daystar coils that allow the suspension to articulate and the airbag can actually drop away from the axle and frame without tearing. So those have been great. I put about 50 pounds of air in these with the camper on the truck and that's been great. So while this truck doesn't have locking differentials and I haven't added an AV bumper with a winch to it yet, I do carry a host of recovery gear with me and that's allowed me to get out of any trouble I've gotten in so far. My friends at Samco Fabrication built these custom aluminum racks for me and they bolt to where the stock jacks go. So I didn't have to drill any holes. And on this side, I've got four max tracks stacked up here, one for each tire. And then on the opposite side, there's a demo shovel if I need to dig out of trouble. And a box here, I put my leveling links in. And then also there's enough room in here that I can put recovery gear or dirty shoes or anything like that I need to carry with me and don't want to take inside. So I really think this sets off the camper. They're unique. Um, they don't take up any space, and I really am pleased with the end product. You're not going to follow me in a van on 32s, sorry, but tire size makes a huge difference in where you can go off-road. So those are the 10 reasons why I chose a four-wheel drive diesel truck with a slide-in camper over a four-wheel drive diesel Sprinter van. Do you think I'm completely nuts? Or do you feel me on this one? Comment below and let me know.